So let me talk a little bit about rewards and punishment for killing other players. So let's say Meng Huo and Zhu Rong over here, they want to attack this player here. This player here only has one health left. Neither of his characters are open. Meng Huo and Zhu Rong, this player, does not know which kingdom this player is from. It might be a friend, it might be a foe. But let's say they decide to kill this player right here. And let's just assume that they manage to reduce this player's life to zero. Okay, so it's not to zero and it's at the brink of death as per normal Sang Kuo None of the other players want to save him. So at this point in time, this player is dead. Now, when a, when a player with both hidden cards die, what you have to do is you have to open up the player's characters to see which kingdom he is from. So what you can see here is that this player is from Qin Xiong, like we described just now. It's not from the same team. Therefore, this player has, killed, uh, has managed to kill an enemy and he gets a reward. The reward is not the same as the previous Sang Kuo Previously, Sang Kuo whenever you kill a Fan Zhe, a rebel, you get two cards, right? In this case, it doesn't work that way. When you kill an enemy, it depends on how many players there are in that enemy's kingdom. So there's only one player from uh, heroes. Therefore, the reward for killing this player is to draw one card and only one. Okay. Now I'm going to change that scenario slightly. Let's say now this character, this Chun Chong character here, is going to kill Liu Shan, for example. Okay. Now, I know that there's some distance limitations, but I'm just going to assume that they are able to kill this character. He knows that Liu Shan is from Su Guo. These two are obviously in a, in a team. Okay. And this Chun Xiong character, the hero's character, successfully manages to kill Liu Shan here. Okay. So Liu Shan is dead. And nobody can save this character. So now you've got to count how, how many players are there from Su Guo. Okay. Which is one, two. Therefore, at the moment where, where this character dies, the killer gets a reward of two cards because there are two Sukho characters. So this player is dead. The next time you kill this character here and it's the only remaining Sukho character, you can only draw one card then because it's the only, only player from Sukho left. Got it? Okay, so let's mix things up a little bit more. This player right here is having Huang Zhong and... Uh, supposedly Su Kuo. However, you notice that this person also has is an ambitionist, right? So he's on his own. Let's say my character, the neutral hero's character, manages to kill this player. Okay, goes down to zero. Nobody saves him and he's dead. So how many cards can I draw? Even though he's using a Su Kuo character, however, this person is an ambitionist. The ambitionist is on a kingdom on his own. Therefore, I only draw one card as a reward. Only one. These two do not count because they're not from the same team. Okay, so that's it then. This is uh, roughly the differences between Sangwasa and this version Kingdom Wars. You will notice here that there are a few major differences. Of course, the most obvious one is that you use two character cards. Uh, when you flip over the character cards, there could be bonuses depending on whether you have 3.5 units of health or you pick synergistic characters. The kingdoms and teams that you belong to depend on the characters that you pick to begin with. For example, Sugo and Sugo. If there are half of the players already belong to one kingdom, the next one that appears can no longer be the same kingdom. It will be an ambitionist. Okay? And if you have more than one ambitionist, they do not belong to the same team. Yeah? So, in general, these are the biggest differences uh, in setting up the gameplay between Kingdom Wars and Sangwasa. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I will see you in part 3. See you then.